I bet that you're probably pretty sick of this series, aren't you? Have no fear. Today, the series comes to a conclusion. This is going to be my last video in the entire restoration of these Jordan 8 Ice Blues. If you haven't seen the sequence of videos before, I highly suggest that you go check out all the work that I've been putting into these things. Today we are about to put the final touches on them with a new buckery die and a repaint of the midsoles. Now I've never done either of these things before. It's going to be a pretty interesting process. What I'm going to start off with is doing the uppers and the suede die first. As you can tell with these, the original color that you can see underneath the straps there is a lot of a deeper blue than this faded out nubuck. So we're gonna be trying to dye all of that nubuck to be the same exact color as underneath the strap there. It's a pretty drastic difference if you ask me. And the first step is going to be the step that I am looking forward to the least, which is trying to color match that blue to the best of my abilities. In order to do this, I have three different Angelus suede dyes. I have a light blue, which I suspect is probably going to be a bit too dark, even though it's considered light blue. I have an Angelus neutral to try and wash out the blue color. And lastly, I have a gray suede dye. This is because you can tell there's a little hint of gray within that ice blue color. What I'm going to be doing is mixing and matching these dyes in different proportions into some shot glasses. And I'll be utilizing this shirt to try the dye and see how close I get in color. Once I have something that I'm satisfied with, I'll go ahead and let her rip. I tried to color match as best as I could by measuring out the different proportions of the dyes that I was using. I quickly found out that this wasn't going to work, especially as I was testing on this white shirt, which also turned out to be a bad idea, which I will discuss later in the video. All right, so it definitely took me a minute there to try and figure out the best combination of these three different suede dyes. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it just right because I think I need some white suede dye or something to that extent because I just can't seem to get it as light as I need it to be. So I'm just gonna go for it. I kind of wanted to make this a little bit darker in the first place. All things considered, it's not gonna be too big of a deal. Let's see how this goes though. I'm kind of sweating it a little bit, but I think it'll turn out okay. I'm gonna use the back side of this t-shirt as my workplace. Oh, here goes nothing. So what I'm realizing as I apply this that I didn't take into account was the base color of the new buck. The base color of the new buck is definitely altering how this dye is turning out, but it actually looks halfway decent. So I'm just gonna keep on going with it because there's not much more I can do at this point in time. So as I was dyeing the shoe, I started to recognize that the color was coming out a little bit patchy. I tried my best to even it out, but it just didn't really seem to be working for me. So I'm also starting to recognize that the blue suede dye separates very quickly from the other suede dyes. So you have to constantly be mixing it in order to achieve the appropriate kind of consistency of all the different dyes. Now, in hindsight, I recognize that I was more than likely applying the dye a little bit too heavy onto these kicks and that could have easily been one of the reasons why the color came out so uneven is just because I was using way too much pressure while utilizing the brush. So this is 100% a very time consuming process. I have to keep remixing the suede dye because the colors keep separating. Overall, the color is definitely not what I was expecting it to be and it's seeming to come in a little bit patchy because of the lack of consistency of the suede dye due to the need to continue to mix it. But what do you do? I'm gonna keep trucking on. Instead of utilizing a paintbrush approach on the left shoe, I actually used more of a dabbing approach where I just dabbed a little bit at a time to try and use a little bit less dye for this shoe. It didn't really work any better. I think next time, if I have a better consistency and a paintbrush, I'll get a much smoother and neater application. As you can probably tell by watching that, this did not go exactly as according to plan. This was really tough. 
I realized that with a, as I was working, I realized that with a manual application of the suede dye, it was really hard to get an even coat. I think that in the future, any time that I wanted to do this, I would probably prefer to do it using an airbrush so I could get a nice even coat through the entire shoe. I would definitely take a lot more time with prep work and try to make sure that everything I didn't want to get hit with the dye was taped off 100% because I didn't realize but the dye actually dyed the midsoles and the outsoles ever so slightly in a few parts. Let's take a quick look. One of the things that I recognized as I was working is that the more that I actually rubbed the brush on the shoe, the more it brought out the blue in the dye combination that I was using. As things are actually starting to dry up a bit, they're looking a little bit better, but quite honestly, I'm not impressed with how uneven the actual dye job is. The color itself, I'm actually not too mad about. I knew that I was gonna try to do something a little bit darker from the beginning. So the fact that these are a hair darker than the original ice blue color doesn't bother me too much. You can see some of the portion of the midsole where I got dye on it as well as on the toe here, how I got some dye on the outsole. I actually kind of wish that I had enough dye to do the entire outsole. You can see some more dye on the midsole as we get over to the medial aspect of the shoe and a little bit more on the heel here. I'm not mad at how this turned out, but I can definitely say it's not exactly what I was hoping for. Granted, this is also the first time that I've ever done this, so I didn't expect I was gonna be perfect at it. Let's take a quick look at the left shoe here and see how I did there. Some similar issues on the left shoe here. You can see that the dye is actually relatively uneven. You can see a lot of portions where the blue sticks out quite substantially. Again, I had some overflow onto the midsole, so now the midsole has some dye on there. But again, a relatively uneven dye job. That could definitely be just because it's my first time ever doing it, or it could also be because I didn't really mix the dyes as well as I think that they should have been mixed. There was a lot of separation between the gray and the blue dyes, and the blue kept separating out, so it was very difficult to maintain a consistent mixture and a consistent color throughout the entirety of the re-dye. Let's wait about 24 hours, we'll check in, we'll see how things are looking then, and then we'll get to the repaint of the midsoles. All right, we're here. Basically been 24 hours since these shoes have been dyed. All I can say is it's a little bit sketchy at best. Let's take a little bit of a closer look to really examine what went wrong during this process. Starting with the right shoe, you can see in the front, the blue is rather splotchy. I attribute this to number one, probably my poor application, and number two, the fact that the dyes weren't exactly mixing together. You can see that the color is actually pretty nice. It's just not very consistent throughout the entirety of the upper. You can see all of that dye on the medial aspect of the midsole, as well as on the heel of the midsole. It looks halfway decent. This is actually kind of the color blue and the depth depth of blue that I was hoping to get. I was just hoping it wouldn't be quite so patchy. Taking a look at the left shoe here, you can see on the toe cap, same issue with the patchiness as far as the blue is concerned. Got some staining on the lateral midsole from excess dye. And as we come towards the heel of the shoe on the lateral side, you can see a couple of spots where the blue is definitely more vibrant. Some staining on the heel from excess dye. I'm not by any means like ashamed of how these turned out, but they definitely were not color matched terribly well and they did come out pretty splotchy. What I'm gonna do here is use my new buck and suede eraser to try and even out the color to the best of my ability. I have no idea if it's gonna work or not and I really don't want to damage the material so I'm probably just gonna give it a little bit of light work and see if it works. The other thing I'm gonna have to consider is I did get a little bit of dye on the outsole on the toe on the medial aspect of the left shoe. I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly. I could potentially dye the entire outsole. I don't know if I want to put in that kind of work right now, so I might just try to scrub that down a little bit too and see what I can do. I went ahead and hit it with the suede and new buck eraser for a couple of minutes, and while it didn't help to blend the colors, it definitely did make the new buck look like it had a little bit more life to it. So to be honest with you, I can't tell if these look any better or any worse or pretty much exactly the same. We'll take a quick look just for comparison's sake. 
the right shoe. It looks a little bit nicer, almost a little bit cleaner. I don't really feel like I blended the colors or kind of knocked away any excessive dye too much, but I don't know, overall I feel like it looks a little bit cleaner. Left shoe, pretty much the same exact case. Nothing too wild and crazy going on, but it looks a little bit cleaner overall. As I scrubbed the shoes, I noticed that I was actually kind of making the blue a little bit more prominent, which I don't really have a problem with because at this point in time, it's all fun and games for me anyway. So I might as well just go balls to the wall with it. All right, now that we have the uppers pretty much at the point where I'm gonna leave them at, it's time to go ahead and get that midsole painted up. As has been mentioned in numerous restoration videos by many, many a restoration artist, prep work is the most important part. What I'm going to be doing is prepping both the outsole and the upper of this shoe. If I do fuck up, oh well, it's not the end of the world. I mean, this is a practice pair after all, but I am trying to get these to look as best as possible. So I'm going to put a really good effort forwards to make sure that these are prepped up to my liking because I do want them to come out as best as they possibly can at bare minimum. Let's get down to the prep work. Really boring, but gotta do it. Unfortunately, Taping for prep work can be one of the most tedious parts of the job, but like I said, it's one of the most important, so I had to make sure that I gave it a really good effort. In hindsight, I probably could have done it in a little bit shorter period of time, but I'm pretty happy with the way that things turned out. All right, I am done with the prep work. Quick little glance at these just so you can see exactly how I tape them up. You can see I did a pretty thorough job. I really took my time with this because after what happened with the suede dye, I really wanna make sure that I get this repaint as perfect as I possibly can. So I really went in and tried to make the tape form fitting to both the outsole and the uppers as much as possible. Another example here on the left shoe, you can see I used multiple small little pieces of tape to try and make this right on point so that I will have no overflow of these paints. Originally, when I had bought my paints, I had this feeling that I was going to need to mix some sort of metallic looking paint along with the traditional gray paint. I ended up picking up this Glitter Lights. Glitter Lights Gunmetal, as well as this gray acrylic paint from Angelus. Little did I realize on the website there was a metallic, so I went with the metallic pewter and that is going to be the color that I will use on this specific repaint. The other color that I will be utilizing for this repaint will be this white from Angelus. I'm just using the standard white because on the original shoe, this was a glossy sort of finish. I'm really hoping that I can do a halfway decent job on this repaint here. That way, these shoes will come out looking halfway decent or at least better off than they were to begin with with a little bit of the sailboat spin all i know now is it's time to get into the repaint on these sneakers well, unfortunately a bunch of footage from the repaint actually got lost and deleted somewhere in translation over to the computer but you can see the basic premise of what i did with the shots here you'll notice that i did use my rotary tool during several different occasions because I found out that there were some imperfections on the midsole that were actually causing the paint job to look a little bit more uneven. So I just decided to even out those spots to make it look a little better. The repaint was a little bit difficult because the midsoles were more pitted than I realized, but overall didn't come out too bad. Almost there, probably about 95% of the way done with this project, I would say. Definitely a few hiccups along the way. Let's take a quick little look before I get down to the final touches. The right shoe, pretty much all painted up. I taped it off correctly. Definitely needs some more white paint to give it a final coat on the lateral aspect of the midsole. You can tell that this metallic gray color that I used was easily a lot darker than it should have been. That's okay. The blue on the suede dye came out pretty dark too. Build to the character, I suppose. Same issues going on here. I'm going to be giving this a final coat of white and taping off the gray portion. So then that way I will get a nice 
sharp lines right where they're supposed to be. And that's about it for the right shoe. Left shoe, a little bit of the same. I actually do need to touch this one up with some of the gray metallic paint before I go in there and do the final paint on the white and tape off all of the lines. So I'll probably end up doing that first. Same type of deal though. I think I taped off everything well enough where I don't really have to worry about any sort of damage to the uppers. They're coming along pretty decently. I'm not 100% pleased with them, but I can't expect perfection on my first run. And the fact that I'm keeping these as a personal makes it a kind of cool endeavor. So as long as they can stay together and I have a little bit of character to them, I think that it's definitely a win overall. Gonna finish painting these suckers up, figure out what we can do. Let's make them look as crisp as we possibly can. Although this was one of the smallest parts of the project as far as size was concerned, it was also one of the most time consuming parts of the project. The reason for this is because there was a lot of fine detail that went into this part. A lot of just making sure that all of my lines were incredibly even, taping over and then cutting out using an exacto knife, trying to make sure that everything just looked as crisp as it possibly could for as old and beat up as the shoe was. Like I said, it was a little bit challenging to try and get even coats of paint due to the fact that the midsoles were a little bit more porous than I had previously anticipated and they were a little bit more pitted. However, I think I did a halfway decent job getting at least an even coat of paint on. It just might not be the exact original color as the original shoe was. Here we are. It's the moment of truth. Paint has been drying for a little bit over 24 hours now, and we're in a spot where we can finally check out these kicks to see if they came out up to snuff. We'll take off the tape and see what the final paint job looks like. So on the right shoe here, the repaint came out okay. I can definitely see why they say prep work is key. I struggled the most at the junction of the metallic gray into the white portion here. And as you can see with the white portion, as I pulled up some of the tape, the paint came right up with it. So I will need to touch up the white paint. I will need to touch up the lines in between the white paint and the gray metallic paint there. The gray metallic on its own actually came out halfway decent. It's a little bit darker than the traditional, but based off of the fact that the whole entire shoe is a lot darker than the original, I think that's okay. You can see over here with the white paint, somewhat of a struggle trying to get a nice even coat, especially after I pulled off the tape. You can see that my lines again between the white paint and the gray metallic paint still aren't as smooth as they could be. I got a couple of things that I definitely need to touch up, but overall, it's okay. Not great, not awful. Leaves a little bit to be desired, but for a first repaint, not too, too shabby. On to the left shoe now. Now we got all of the tape off of this left shoe here and it's time to take a look and see what we got as far as final outcome. Looking at the medial aspect of the shoe, the gray metallic section in the front actually looks pretty good. Not a halfway bad consistency of as far as paint's concerned. Again, some trouble once we get to the line with the white paint. Just not a clean cut line, doesn't look great. Up here with the white paint, you can see we got a little bit of overflow which I'm gonna have to exacto knife. Down in between the outsole and the midsole, you can see some points where the paint bubbled up due to a poor reglue. A little bit of a rougher line on the transition from the gray metallic to the white in the back here. However, this gray metallic, as we get through the heel of the medial aspect, looks pretty good. And even as we go through the entire heel, not too shabby. Just a couple of spots where the outsole meets the midsole where it looks a little bit rough. As we come around to the lateral aspect of the heel portion, you can see a few spots where the gray metallic paint didn't mesh up quite exactly and then we get to the transition over to the white paint again a little bit rough around the edges especially the parts where the white paint overlapped on the tape 
and the tape actually physically pulled off some of the white paint, such as right through this section right here. A rougher line, transition from the white to the metallic gray, and then we also have some portions where that metallic gray paint came onto the outsole due to poor preparation up on the lateral aspect of the toe box there. I got a few final touch-ups that I need to do on this pair of kicks before I can consider them complete. And I don't know that they'll ever be exactly what I expected or wanted them to be, but I'm pretty happy with the fact that I did put in the effort to, to give an entire full restoration on this pair of kicks. They turned out okay for somebody who's never restored a pair in its entirety before. Some of the stuff that I thought was gonna be really challenging turned out to be a little bit easier in hindsight. Some of the stuff that I thought was gonna be a little bit easier just so happened that that was the more challenging aspect of these sneakers than I anticipated. At any rate, I got a fresh new pair of personal kicks to add to the collection. Hopefully with the final touch-ups, they'll turn out to be absolutely incredible. Stay tuned because I have one final video for this specific pair that's going to be kind of compare and contrast from what they looked like before to what they look like now. This was my first restoration attempt. I'm pretty happy myself, but I know that there are a lot of things that could have gone a little bit better during this process. Hope that you guys enjoyed this portion of the re-dye and the repaint. We'll go through and talk a little bit more about the entire process in the recap video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I'm Sailboat. I'm out of here.